I, I love what Paul is saying here because he's saying even the best human, even the best man, even the most religious woman fails. Because he's pointing out this guy who's perfect. You're a light to those who are in darkness. You're the blind leading the blind. Uh, you're a guide for those who are blind. You're a trainer of the foolish. You teach the simple. Because in this law, you think you have some kind of formulation of the truth. You know the truth. And here he's trying to show that you don't know anything. Yeah, because you have to keep the law, every law, all of the time. And then it works and we become righteous before God. If we all obeyed all the law all the time, we would be righteous with God. But no one can do that. No one has done that apart from the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Greetings. I am going to go over Romans chapter 1 and 2 in case you've missed 1 and 2. And even if you were there for the Bible study, we're doing a Bible study on Romans this season. Um, it is 2024, October 30th. We have just finished Romans 1 and 2. We're about to study Romans 3 this week. So get into Romans 3. And we are going to discuss it a week from last Tuesday. So November, it'll be November 5th. Okay, so November 5th, Tuesday, November 5th. We're going to be meeting on Zoom. Get the link in the description. Sign up so I can send you the link. The link in the description is for you to sign up, not the link for the Zoom uh, call. I need you to sign up so that I can get you on my email list so that I can get you this link. Um, you can unsubscribe if I'm emailing you too much, but you're going to love being on my email list. Okay, so we've been through Romans chapter 1 and Romans chapter 2. These are basic beginning to establish this is, this is what Romans 1 and 2 do. And I want to explain this by going back to our Zoom meeting so you can hear what we had to say during the meeting. So check this out. Welcome, everybody. We are at the table of the Lord, and we are going to dive in and eat of the good food, right? Amen. The Word of God is, is nutrition. All right, let's dive into Romans chapter 2. I promise Romans 1 and 2 are the hardest part. We are going to get into the real meat, though, of Romans 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, and 8. So um, look forward. Look forward. Even as you're going through some of the hard wait, hard times of the Bible, God is pleased with you that you're going through the hard times, that you're walking through the dry, that you're walking through... I don't get this, but I'm going to keep walking. That is, God is so proud when you just keep walking. Go ahead. Is it, is it like a lawyer building a case in court? <laughs> yeah, that's what he's doing. Tell, yeah. Talk to us, Alan. And you kind of got to, you've got to read the chapter, bearing in mind the whole of his presentation and case. Paul's building a case and he's doing it. He's doing it. I think, I think like a lawyer, this is, this is the start of his presentation and he's building a case. So it's kind of it's kind of interesting, and like a lawyer, you know, you've got to listen to the end, and or not the end, but as he as he unfolds this whole matter. Do I'm not going to read through it. You can read through Romans one and two. I was going to, but I just want to explain what it establishes because it does go through Romans one goes through every sin you can imagine. It's not saying in Romans one that because you've done any of these that you deserve damnation. What it's, what it's trying to show is because you've turned away from God, this is what you, this is what you're left with. You're left with a life of sin, sinfulness. Your life revolves around sin. You've been, you've been handed over to sin. Um, so what it's showing is we are all under condemnation and dominion of sin, we're all slaves to sin without Jesus. And because it goes, it says in verse in, in Romans chapter one, since they did not see fit to acknowledge God, God handed them over to all kinds of evil. So the big, the reason you're in the midst of sin is not because you're, it's because you've chosen it. You've chosen that over God. There's, you have chosen to not acknowledge God in your life. So that's what you're left with. Okay. And another verse in Romans chapter one says, 
because they have exchanged the glory of the immortal God for mere images, because they've went gone to idolatry, again, God handed them over to impurity through the lust of their hearts. The big, huge sin here that he's talking about in Romans chapter one is turning from God. I think that's that's enough. <laughs> okay, on to Romans chapter two. Romans chapter two starts with, therefore you are without excuse, every one of you who passes judgment. He begins chapter two by talking about those who are judging others. And what he's trying to show is, you may think you're so good and you're judging others who you think are so bad. And Paul says, why? Why, would you, why do you judge them when you are just as guilty? The standard by which you judge another, you condemn yourself since you, the judge, do the very same thing. He's not saying maybe you do it. He's saying whatever you're judging others, you're doing the exact same thing. Paul's saying the fact that you're judging <laughs> makes you um, a sinner. What Paul is about to do in chapter two is to declare all of us sinners, all of us deserving of the wrath of God. He's declaring all of us guilty. In the first part of Romans chapter two, he's saying, judgment is coming to all who are evil and eternal life to all who are good. For all who do evil, practice evil, who are evil and do evil things, wrath of God is coming. What God, what, what he is, what Paul is saying is not that there are some who are going to heaven because they're good and some who are going to hell because they're bad. He's, he's trying to explain something here in Romans chapter two, that this is all of us and we are all this person. We all deserve wrath the wrath of God, because we are all under condemnation because we've all sinned. This, this is condemnation he's talking about. And he's, what, God, what, what Paul is setting us all up for is condemnation if you are a sinner and doing b bad deeds. That's what he's setting us up. That's his setup in here. If you are a sinner and you are doing bad works, you're going to get the, pun the punishment you deserve. Okay. He's trying to show us that not that, not that wrath, not that judgment isn't coming. Judgment and punishment are due you because you are a sinner. And judgment is coming to all those who sin. The question is, is that judgment and punishment going to land on you or on Jesus? It's not that we don't deserve the punishment. And what Paul's trying to say is you do deserve it, but all of you do. Just because you're the Jews doesn't mean just, just you Jews are going to get off scot-free and all the Gentiles are the ones going to hell. No, he's saying you all are under the law. Okay, so now he goes on to explain you are going to be judged by the law. Whether you're under the law or not under the law, you're going to be judged by the law. So it's not just the Jews who are judged because they've got the law. The Gentiles are also going to be judged because they too have a law the law that's written on their heart. God is not going, God is going to make sure that we all know what's right and wrong. And we're all choosing to go our own way or go God's way. Okay. Especially we as parents, have such a responsibility to train our children up in the way they should go. Because what we're doing is we're not making the decision for them, but we're not allowing them to make a good decision. We're not allowing them or giving them the opportunity to choose Christ. We as parents who do not, I'm talking about parents who do not raise their children up to know God. We as Christians have the obligation and responsibility. And that's what Paul's talking about in one. He goes, I am under obligation. We as Christians are under the obligation to get the word out so that everyone has an opportunity to make a good decision the decision to choose Jesus. But God's saying is, whether you're a Jew or a Gentile, you know the truth. You're under a law of some kind, the law or the, uh, the law, the natural law, the law that knows what is right and what is wrong, the law that's written in your heart. 
There will be sorrow and suffering for Jews and Gentiles alike who keep on sinning. He's saying, there, he's trying to show that Jews and Gentiles alike are both under condemnation, are both um, the same. And see, Jews have set themselves apart from the Gentiles their whole entire life as the chosen people that have the law and that we have the law and therefore there is no salvation through anything but obeying this law, doing the sacrifices, becoming circumcised. And Paul's saying something different here. So end is, we, we got Jesus, but... Amen. So let's keep going. 12 through 16. All who sin. Now he's trying to remember, like Alan said, I think you said this so well, Alan. He is stating his case. He's he's stating his case. And what his case is that everyone deserve needs a, I'm gonna say it, everyone needs a savior. That's his that's the case he's making. He's making a case here. And his case is. No one is outside the law. No one is a, is good. No one, everyone is at the same place, a sinner. There's not one. You could call yourself a Jew, you're still a sinner. You could call yourself a Gentile, you're still a sinner. There's not one person. That's like what I was saying, whether you're a slave, free, woman, man, Hebrew, Greek, you're all sinners, y'all sinners. And that's what he's trying to say here. So that's the case he's making. So he's going to keep on making it with verse 12 through 16. All who sin outside the law will perish without reference to it. And all who sin under the law will be judged in accordance with it. In other words, if you're Gentile or Jew, you're going to be judged. That's what he's trying to state the case he's trying to state, state here. For it is not those who hear the law who are just in the sight of God, rather those who observe the law. He's saying, Jews, you hear it. You got it. It's yours. But do you obey it? No, he's saying. Okay, keep, I'm going to keep going. 14. For when the Gentiles who do not have the law by nature observe the prescriptions of the law, they are a law for themselves, even though they do not have a law. In other words, they too are under a law. <laughs> Verse 15. They show that the demands of the law are written in their hearts while their consciences also bears witness and their conflicting thoughts accuse and even defend them on the day when, according to my gospel, God will judge people's hidden, hidden works through Jesus Christ. The whole world will be judged through Jesus Christ. Amen. <clears throat> what he's trying to show is whether you're a Jew or a Greek, you're under, you're under the same judgment. You're going to be judged according to your heart, according to whether you obey the law under the law or whether you obey the law without the law, either way, you're, you've, got, you've got a law. And you know in your heart, you know in your mind, you know when your thoughts accuse you, you know when you're wrong. Everyone knows when they're wrong, when, what, what they're doing is wrong. You know what you're doing is wrong. And that's why people stop going to church because they don't, they know deep in their heart they're wrong, which is the wrong thing to do. That's when you need God the most. See, that's how, how funny we are. We don't realize that that's when we need God. And that's what he's trying to show everybody. Hey, if you don't admit you're a sinner, you don't admit you need God, then you're never going to receive salvation. Everyone will be judged through Jesus, Jew and Gentile alike, and we'll all be found guilty. This is what... Paul is preparing us for. Now, if you call yourself a Jew and rely on the law and boast of God and know his will, and you're like, you're, he's describing the super Jew. And if you are able to discern what is important, since you are instructed by the law, and if you are confident that you are a guide for the blind, a light for those in darkness, that you are a trainer of the foolish and a teacher of the simple, because in the law, you have this formulation of knowledge and truth. Then you who teach another, are you failing to teach yourself? Paul is saying, even if you're super Jew, you're still failing. He's saying there is nobody who isn't going to fail. Nobody who is righteous based on the law. You, you then who teach another, are you failing to teach yourself? You who preach against stealing, do you steal? You who forbid adultery, do you commit adultery? You who detest idols, do you rob temples? You who boast of the law, do you dishonor God by breaking the law? 
For it is written, because of you, the name of God is reviled among the Gentiles. I, I think what Paul is starting with the Jews, you know, um, and, dis, and, and dismantling their case for righteousness. Come on. And then he moves on to everyone who doesn't have the law, which is everybody else in the world, because they have a conscience which speaks to them. So Paul is kind of saying, if you, if you want to be righteous, obey the law. But you have to obey the law and your conscience all the time yeah. in every matter. And if you don't, you are condemned. So as, the, as a lawyer, he's, he's building this case. He begins with the really difficult bad news. He's saying, look, this, these people are guilty. And then he's going to he's going to move on to a solution for that. But that's yeah. later. So no, he's in no. the middle of this. It's a heavy down like you guys. We are all sinners before God. No one has a claim to righteousness because we've all failed. If you've broken one law on one occasion, mm-hmm. you're a sinner. And I just have to repeat what you said. Dismantling their case for righteousness. That's what he's doing. In a sense, we are in the dock, I think. In the what? We are in the dock because I don't know, you know, when you're in court, you if you're the accused, you have to go into the dock. You go into a little ch- chamber and a wooden door closes on you and you and the lawyer, the lawyers fight over you. Do you not have that in America? No, what's oh, a dock? I'm sorry. I, I'm I thought sorry. You... So it's like a, it's like a, it's like a particular place in court where you stand as the accused. OK, that, yeah, we call it the dock. And. And we are standing in the dock and Paul is presenting yeah. our case, which so far is not looking too clever. You no, know? and it's going to end with judgment. So get used to it. And that's what he's saying. Y'all deserve to be judged. Y'all, gu- y'all guilty. <laughs> you who are a super Jew, even if you are the best Jew in the whole world, you're still going to fail. It's impossible for you to keep the law. So you are under judgment. You are guilty and condemnation is coming. What what God is trying to show us and Paul is trying to show us through Romans 1 and 2 is that condemnation is we're all under condemnation. Condemnation is for everybody. Everyone is condemned because you have failed to keep the law. Whether you are a Jew or a Gentile, you have failed to keep the law. No one has an excuse before God saying, "I just didn't know." No. We all know because it's written in our hearts. We know when we're doing wrong. We know right from wrong. I I love what Paul is saying here because he's saying even the best human, even the best man, even the most religious woman fails. Because he's pointing out this guy who's perfect. You're a light to those who are in darkness. You're the blind leading the blind. Uh, You're a guide for those who are blind. You're a trainer of the foolish. You teach the simple. I think what... I love what Paul is saying here because he's saying even the best Jew, even the best Jew, even the most religious Jew fails. Because he's pointing out this Jew who's perfect. You're a light to those who are in darkness. You're the blind leading the blind. Uh, You're a guide for those who are blind. You're a trainer of the foolish. You teach the simple. Because in this law, you think you have some kind of formulation of the truth you know the truth and here he's trying to show that you don't know anything yeah because you have to keep you have to keep the law every law all of the time and then it works and we become righteous before god if we all obeyed all the law all the time we would be righteous with god but no one can do that no one has done that apart from the lord jesus christ amen He's particularly going after our self-righteousness, isn't he? Yeah. He's going after the hypocrites, which is me. Yeah. And us. Come on. Yeah. It's you, not me. (laughs) (laughs) Okay. I'm going to go on to verse 9 of chapter 3. I'm now in Romans chapter 3. We have studied... Last week, Romans chapter 2, all the way to Romans chapter 3, verse 20. This is Paul saying, I've already brought a charge. We've already brought the charge against Jews and Greeks alike that all are under the domination of sin. This is what Paul's trying to get across. Everyone is under the domination of sin, is a slave to sin. 
And he goes on to quote Psalms and um, Ecclesiastes, where it says, there is no one just, not one. There is no one who understands. There's no one who seeks God. All have gone astray. All are all alike are worthless. There's not one who does good, not even one. Their throats are open graves. They deceive with their tongues. And the way of peace they do not know. There's no fear of God before their eyes. Now, we know, he goes on to say, that what the law says is addressed to those under the law, so that every mouth may be silenced and the whole world stand accountable to God. What Paul's saying here is the whole world is accountable to God. Since no human being will be justified in his sight by observing the law for the law, for through the law comes the consciousness of sin. Romans chapter three, let me read this version. But not one of them has any excuse. In fact, all the world stands hushed and guilty before almighty God. What, what God wants us to know is we're all guilty every single one of us, since no human being will be justified in his sight by observing the law, for, the, for through the law comes the consciousness of sin. The purpose of the law was to show you and me and the whole world that we can't keep the law, that we are sinners. It's to bring us to consciousness that we're sinning. If there's not a law that says don't do it, we won't know it's wrong. Even though we'll know it's wrong, but it won't be accounted wrong. And God wanted us all accounted wrong. He wanted us to know we were wrong. So that's the reason for the law is to show us that we have broken the laws and need Jesus. The whole world needs God. It's like um, Ephesians chapter two, verse one, you were dead in your transgressions and sins. Before Jesus, you were dead because the Bible says the, the wages of sin is death. So since everybody sins, we all deserve death. But because of Jesus, we are all alive. God made us alive in Christ. Jesus brought us back to life. The Holy Spirit brought us back to life. When we rose from the dead, when Jesus rose from the dead, we rose from the dead because we died with him. We rose with him because we were all dead spiritually. God had to come and make us alive. I was just telling a, a friend of mine, she goes, you know, I just, because of my father had heart disease. Now I'm afraid I'm going to have heart disease. And I said, you can't blame your father for passing down to you heart disease because We've all been passed down death and disease and all kinds of horrible consequences to, of, of sin through our bloodline. We, every, we don't even we don't have just what our father gave us. We have everything our father gave us all the way back through Adam. All that has been passed down to us. We have all kinds of stuff in our ancestry. But Jesus made us born again, alive, born again. We died with Christ and were raised to life again in Christ Jesus. We now live in Christ. We have been, through our baptism, what we did is we were crucified with Christ, buried with Christ, and rose again. We've been made brand new. We are new creations, and we are born again, born anew. So I said to her, in reality, all that ancestry now has been cut off, and now you have a new ancestry, Jesus. So um, verse 8 of Ephesians 2 says, For by grace you have been saved through faith. And this is not from you. It's a gift of God. You have been saved not by your good works, not by your ability to not sin. You can't save yourself. You were dead. You cannot make yourself alive. Jesus made you alive. It's like a person swimming and drowning out there in the, in the pool or in the ocean. 
You're, the lifeguard isn't going to call you and say, keep swimming, just swim anyways, just move your feet, kick your feet. It's not going to help. You're drowning. You cannot save yourself. You need a lifeguard. You need a life draft. You need something to hold on to. Well, that's what Jesus does for us because we are dead. We cannot make ourselves alive. We need salvation. And that is what God wants us to all know, the whole world to know that we are all dead. We all deserve condemnation because we have sinned. And we all fall short of the glory of God. Let me read Ephesians chapter three. I want to go on to the beginning of chapter three, verse 21, which we're going to read this week. Uh, Romans chapter three, verse 21. Okay. I want to just give you a taste of what's coming because I've told you all the bad parts. Romans 321. This is what we're going to read this week. But now the righteousness of God has been manifested apart from the law, though testified by the law and the prophets, the righteousness of God through faith in Jesus Christ for all who believe. There's a new righteousness. It used to be you became righteousness by obeying the law. The reason that was set in place so that you will know that you can't do it. The law was meant to show you that you can't do it. You can't get there on the, on your own. So a new righteousness, a new way to God has been made manifest, has been made known. And this new righteousness is through faith in Jesus Christ. That is what Paul has been building. The righteousness of God through faith in Jesus Christ for all who believe. There's a new righteousness because it goes on to say, because there's no distinction, Jew, Gentile, slave, free, woman, man, <laughs> there is no part. God is not, does not have favorites. Everyone is under the domination of sin because it says in verse 23 of Romans chapter three, all have sinned and are deprived of the glory of God. They are justified freely by his grace through the redemption in Christ Jesus. Amen. The rest we're going to dis discuss next week. So let me see you all there. Tuesday, November 5th, 11 o'clock Eastern. That's 10 Central, 9 Mountain, 8 Pacific, and 11, 12, 1, 2, 3, 4, 4 o'clock? 4 o'clock London, 5 o'clock Malta. See you then. I love your version, and I want to encourage you all to have multiple versions. It is so important. I always will start with, personally, I start with the New New American Bible, Catholic Bible. It's where I start always. And then I'll go and read something else, because especially um, one of my favorites is the Living Bible, the New Living Translation, the, amen. <laughs>